You're listening to KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming around the world at KEXP.org. I'm Cheryl Waters. So excited to have Camp Cope in the studios with us. Welcome. Oh my God, thank you. Feels like this has been a long time coming. We were such big fans of your last record, and uh, you never made it to Seattle, but here you are today. And a brand new record, How to Socialize and Make Friends. Want to start us off with a couple of songs? Yes. <laughs>
Sure. Camp Cope is live here in the KEXP studios. They're just going to play another one. Ah, this song's called How to Socialize and Make Friends. That one was called Yo Fat Lighter. I don't know if I'm meant to say it or not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Awesome. Camp Cope live on KEXP playing songs from their latest album, How to Socialize and Make Friends. That's out on Poison City Records in Australia and New Zealand and Run for Cover in the U.S. and Europe. It is so great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. I was in Australia in November. I met Tomo there. And one of the things I totally noticed about Melbourne was how vibrant and alive the music scene is there and so many people in bands going out to see live music and you all have been making music a long time I bet you were even involved in that scene when you were not making music when you were young tell me about the community that you've created there because you seem to have a really tight-knit uh, family of friends and other musicians and you've just really ensconced yourself in a lot of love yeah it's um i don't know it's i guess there's a lot of um it seems like everyone in melbourne's in a band that's exactly like you said um i don't know i guess everyone's pretty supportive of everyone people who own the venues in melbourne play in bands people who run everything in the city are in bands so everyone sort of helps each other out i guess that's helpful to how it all works and everyone becomes friends and hangs out. <laughs> you all seem to have a pretty tight relationship. You almost seem like family when I read interviews with you. It feels like you're all sisters. How did you all meet and, and start playing in Camp Cope? It's like two sisters and, and a, a mom. mom. 
<laughs> I do hear Tomo refer to as the mom or the momager quite often. Just the momager. Yeah. Um, I was playing solo for ages, and then Tomo and I became friends just like through the scene, I guess. And then I found out that she played drums, and I roped her into playing with me. And then I met Kelly, and then it just kind of clicked and worked. I had to ask someone to ask Kelly to jam. Georgia doesn't have very good uh, people skills, so <laughs> it took like an extra second for me to join, but no, it was good. Yeah. Well, Georgia and all of you definitely have strong opinions and loud voices, and I thank you so much for using your uh, platform as you gain more recognition as a band. You're voicing what a lot of people are feeling right now, and I know you get asked this a lot, but you've definitely not held back, and you're talking about what's important to you, and I know you get criticized for it a lot, but anyone who has an opinion about anything, I mean, even, you know, how to wash your socks, <laughs> I don't agree with that, gets criticism. So I hope that you take that, you know, in the vein that the criticism is made, but you have really spoken for a lot of people, and that's really meaningful. Can you talk a little bit about that and, you know, where, where you draw the bravery to put what you put in your lyrics, especially you, Georgia, who writes the songs? Um, oh, the writing the lyrics. I don't really write with anybody else in mind. So, I don't know. If I'm seeing it, I feel like I'm not really saying it, but I'm, like, kind of hiding behind something, I guess. Or I've got, like, the strength of the music to really say what I mean. Um, yeah. How, how do the songs come together? Kelly, I know that you, you were talking about uh, once where you play the song, in an interview where you play the songs live, and then Georgia puts the uh, vocals in there while you and Tomo go watch TV. Oh, yeah, that's how we record it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but usually Georgia will send us, like, a song that she's written on guitar, and then um, we'll listen to it. It's like a phone recording. Then we'll listen to it and kind of, like, come together and record it. But definitely, like, when we're in the studio, uh, we play live as a band and then Georgia does the vocals. So there's some things that we don't, like, know or hear until we listen to it all back, which is really interesting and fun, surprising. This is kind of exactly how we record. So. <laughs> yeah. This is our new record right now. Right here at KESP, yeah. make yeah. your next record. One of the great things that I'm loving about talking to bands recently is I'm actually having a similar discussion with a lot of band. People are feeling more comfortable saying publicly what they're feeling and taking that responsibility again, having that platform. And one of the things among many that is important to you that you're talking about as a band is making your shows safe spaces for people to see music. I just had that same conversation with Sadie of Speedy Ortiz. And one of the things that you're doing, because she's doing some very specific things, she talks to the venues everywhere she goes and educates them. She's coming with a positive attitude instead of a shaking her finger and telling them how to do it, but more of an educational um, approach with them. What kind of things are you feeling that you're able to do to make those safer spaces for the people who want to come and enjoy music? I feel like the people that come to our shows in Australia kind of know where we stand on a lot of things and so there's like a level of behaviour that's expected and like I've like read tweets of like people in our crowds like calling other people out for doing like things that compromise people's safety or comfort and that's really nice that that's kind of changing and people are able to speak up and be like hey like that's not okay here like yeah. Do you feel like you're seeing a lot more younger women coming out to your shows that might not have been going to see shows before? Yeah, and it's so inspiring. Like, it's really beautiful. I love it. We talked a little bit about the Melbourne music community, and I know that it's very wide and very diverse, and I'm sure that a lot of cross, and then people have do their own thing. Are there artists that have sort of been an inspiration to you, that have guided you, provided direct help, or just by virtue of the kind of life they live or the career that they've had that have inspired you? Because you do everything yourselves. So I'm thinking, where are you kind of learning this? Law, trial and error, I'm sure. It all comes from Tom Lowe. Yeah, we kind of play off each other a lot. Like, I see these two as a huge inspiration for me, like, in, in my art. But I guess we've had mentors, like Courtney Barnett has been an amazing mentor and friend to us, and Jen Cloer as well. They're like our other mums. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like as well, um, I guess, the, like our label at home as well, all the bands are quite like you know connected and sort of 
bounce things off each other and it's sort of like a bit more of a family so you kind of it's a family not help, a business yeah, yeah help each other out and learn from each other's terrible mistakes one of my first stops when I went to Melbourne was uh, Poison City, yep. and that's where I met you, and I got to listen to the record months yeah, before really, it was released. Really long time ago. But what a great space that is. I mean, a record uh, label, a record store, a skate shop, and then it just really just feels like a clubhouse. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's our lounge room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think much to Tomo's dismay, we're always there, <laughs> sitting on the boxes. and we're using the toilet. We're using the <laughs> Well, anyone that's in Melbourne, I highly recommend. It is open to the public. It's you did become quite the local over your time, didn't you? I kept seeing you on the street. I know, I kept running into you everywhere I went. And Andy, we should give him a shout out. Yep. And yep. we played, uh, you're in a band with him called TV Hayes, I which am. we played in that last set. Yeah, I, I was sitting there and I was like, why do I know this? Oh, that's me. That's weird. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Well, I'm so delighted to have you here tonight. You're playing an all-ages show at the Vera Project. Um, we couldn't have made it more convenient for you. I don't know if you know that it's just like 10 steps away. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and uh, got more songs, How to Socialize and Make Friends. It's Camp Cope Live on KEXB.
Georgia rocking her headphones off on that one. The opener from the new album, How to Socialize and Make Friends, and The Face of God. Two very powerful songs and so awesome. Speaking to the opener and uh, people telling you what shows you can play and where you should play and how many female artists we should have on a bill. You've played some pretty incredible shows, uh, some amazing venues I got to visit in Australia, the Forum, and then is it as exciting for bands to play the Sydney Opera House as it would seem to me? That is one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen. I took about 800 photos when I went to Sydney. I would take like one step and take a photo, and then I took three more steps, and I felt like, oh my gosh, it looks so much different. Three more steps, and then three more steps. It's uh, truly terrifying. Um, it's so beautiful. It's like we feel almost like... They're going to kick us out yeah, at any moment. Yeah. We're not supposed to be there. Yeah. We're, we're far too grubby to be inside that beautiful building. But it's really nice of them to let us. Um, yeah, they usually have, you know, things like the ballet and the, the Sydney Symphony Orchestra and people like Björk and PJ Harvey, and then they let us run in there. I don't really oh, understand that, but ferals. that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Were you able to relax and enjoy the shows? Oh, last time we played there in the, in the, the smaller room, the, the drama theatre, we would terrified. So we'll probably be equally as terrified, but also pretty jet lagged because we play the day after we land. They gave us uh, like home. four dressing rooms. So we had one each and then one to share. If, if, so we all just sat in one tiny one, like really huddled together, like, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? <laughs> oh, no. Well, each time you go back, you'll get more and more comfortable, hopefully. Yeah. Mm, but it's so great. Big. <laughs> it's so great to have you here, and uh, we look forward to you coming back here as well. Have fun tonight at the Vera Project. Thank, Thank you. you. The new album, How to Socialize and Make Friends, it's Camp Cope live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.